We've been talking about the metal workers' strike for nearly a month now. Stephen Clapo, who is head of collective bargaining at NAMSA, the National Union of Metal Workers, is here in the studio at the JSC to talk about the end of the NAMSA strike. Morning to you, Steve. Uh, you've, we've been on the phone to you quite a lot, often under stressful circumstances, so thanks for being available. But good Thank to have you, you in here. Uh, on the one hand, we were saying a bit earlier, it looks like the strike is ended. On the other hand, there are still things lingering and disagreements among the employers about what's uh, possible. How do you see the end of the strike now? Look, from us as NUMSA, we think the strike is over. Um, we're not going to entertain the politics of the employers. There are politics within them. For us, is that the strike is over. Uh, whoever wants to take um, uh, risk on locking out our members is taking that on its own risk because we we have called our members to report the work. Um, we have lost production, we have lost salaries. We think it's time to start and continue and go forward. Now, whoever wants to lock our members out, we think we'll deal with that as it comes. Yeah. We don't think it's fair for organizations like uh, NIESA, who were part of the negotiations all along, and then they come now and say they don't accept the offer. Mm. Um, what is also not uh, clear to us is that NIESA is offering um, a similar percentage to all other workers except the lowest paid. In other words, we see NIESA as continuously wanting to keep the status quo, that workers, in particular black workers, must earn less. And it's the same NIESA that was calling for halving the salary of workers. If you half the salary of workers in the metal industry, we're talking about uh, a salary of about 2,700. I wonder who can live with that salary scale of 2,700 per month, um, which is less than um, the CEO's uh, dinner um, at one time. So I don't think this is fair for, for workers that they can get such salaries. Mm. Steve, of course, uh, I understand that you say you will deal with these things as they happen, but we've heard the chief executive of NIASA saying very clearly that they're going to take this uh, matter to court. What's your game plan if they should do that? How are you going to be protecting your workers from that civil action? No, they're taking, I, I don't understand what they're taking to court. First, NIESA failed to even declare a dispute for that matter. They don't have a dispute with us. It seems to declare a dispute with us. By law, if they want to lock our members out, they must give our members 48 hours notice. But after a dispute, they don't have a dispute as we speak, and they want to continue and do what, what okay. is illegal and unprotected. But what we think, what we can do, as soon as they lock our members out, we'll go to court, we'll interdict them, we'll deal with them as we deal with them. But Steve, let's look at the, the actual settlement of this. So mm -hmm. you, you, you brought your demand down, the employers uh, brought theirs up. So give us the essence of the numbers here, what the deal is about. As we speak now, the deal is about 10% for the lowest paid workers and 8% for what we call the highest in the bargaining unit, which is the highest for us is an artisan, the lowest is those workers and the general workers. So it's 10%. For the first year, it's 10% for the first three grades. For the second year, it's 10% for the second uh, top uh, less grade. And then for the last year, um, the lowest grade will get 10%. So it's 10, 10, 10 mm. per year. Then it goes on the slightly scale till to eight, and the second year till to seven, and, uh, and the third year till to yeah. seven. Those are the figures. Steve, you are also fighting for the peace clause. Uh, did you win on that one? Look, we think Currently, we've got what you call, for us, it looks like we have a, a status quo. Uh, that those companies, because the initial demand from the employers was that if we finish this negotiation and we sign a deal, no worker can raise anything at plant level. Now, we had companies that already bargain certain things. Um, some companies, like um, construction companies, will bargain things like substance allowance from time to time. They were saying we must stop those things. Now, in terms of the current laws, we then have agreed that we can continue in those companies where we've got plant level arrangement to, to bargain. So we think it's the status quo for us. What do you say about uh, the claims that the higher wage increases will lead to job losses? I, I, I don't understand that, that the higher wage loss. We think the more people have got more power in power is when the economy will grow. 
because we need people to have buying power. Yeah, but there are particular employers who say they can't afford it. So the Niasa guys are saying 8% maximum, for example. The bargaining council has its own processes and structures. There is what you call, if you can't afford, you must come and apply for exemption. And those exemptions for the past 20 years have been successful at a rate of 80%. What we're saying is that if you can't afford, come to us, let's sit down both with workers and the bargaining council and see what's your problem, where can we help you. But if you open your books and say we can't afford, this is what we can afford, we allow many of the employers, 80% that applied for the past three years in the agreement, they got their exemption, they paying less than what is paid. But they mu we must understand also, as soon as we get uh, the company get to the level where they can afford, they must also begin to give workers better salaries. Mm. A final one, Steve, before we let you go. There's also the sentiment that uh, the, the investment climate in South Africa is becoming weaker because of the strength of the unions. And in fact, the stronger you get, the more unattractive the country becomes in terms of investment. We saw the impact of this, the strike uh, just last year and uh, the, the sentiments around BMW looking at other markets outside of South Africa. Do you get a sense of responsibility for uh, the, the investment climate in the country? I don't think companies are investing because of, of uh, the labor, they're looking at labor. Labor is one of them. But structural problems in this country are the ones that throw employers uh, investment out. There are countries where unions are more stronger than us. European countries, German, for example, has got strong unions. But I don't think it's because there's investment is taking place in Germany. I think here in South Africa is not a question of labor. There are more other issues that are included here, structural problems and other things, domestic market. Uh, we, as we speak now, we're buying our steel more expensive than Swaziland in our own country. So those are the things Steve, that make investment not to be... You yet. talk about Germany and, and I don't know how many strikes they have compared to us, but the other issue around the strikes is violence and intimidation. At the beginning of your strike, there were a lot of reports, very nasty incidents of violence, uh, particularly on the East Rand. The union response, not just you, but generally the union response in such circumstances is, it's, it's not us. We can't take responsibility. They aren't our members. Yet, uh, why would they be doing this if they are not supporting you or not them? I mean, what is your approach to violence and intimidation surely it's got as a union you've got to condemn it and stop it no we we did condemn it and we did try we spoke to our members as we see as the strike progressed it went less and less and we managed to go we know that there were other elements but you can't say all those elements our members there are members that were there and as a union we think we need to go on a but do you discipline education. them if they behave like we that? do go into discipline them our structures are working on them we had strike committees that have to give us support we'll have to deal with those things especially if they are leaders as shop stewards we need to be able to deal with those problems but as we think that needs further education uh, for our members and we're going to deal with that as we continue we don't deny that there were elements inside that were our members but we might say also there are other people who are using the strike for their own thing. There are many of them that are arrested in Israel, more than 10, 15 of them. And they were grouped that moving from area and area to make sure that they use this so that they can gain other accesses. For instance, they were stealing computers all over. Our members don't steal computers. What do they do with computers? And I think our members, they understand that you can't destroy fake trees because they have to go back and work. Mm. Uh, Steve, thank you so much uh, for making the time to join us and to give us uh, that update on the back of the strike. That was Stephen Tlapel. He's the head of collective bargaining at NUMSA.